Sometimes quadratic equations start with an a that isn't 1 and look something like this. In this video, we're going to learn how to factor these types of quadratic equations. Let's dive right into it and try an example together so that we get an idea of how to factor these types of quadratic equations. Whereas a more simple equation to factor would have been x squared minus x minus 12, what would we do if we had something like this? In a situation like this, you need to multiply a and c together, which is 3 and 4, to get 12. Then we want to find all the factors of 12, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12 and see which two numbers can be added together to equal b, which in this case is 8. So we know that 1 and 12 don't add up to be 8. But we know that 2 and 6 do add up to be 8, so we don't need to continue any further. With 2 and 6 in mind, we just need to split this 8x into 2x plus 6x. Now we know that between 3x squared and 2x, we cannot factor out any number. And our objective is to factor out a number and an x variable. So instead of making it 2x plus 6x, let's rearrange it to be 6x plus 2x. Now what we can do is see this equation as being split into these two parts. From here, we can factor out the 3x from this part to get 3x times x plus 2 plus, and then over here, factor out a 2 to get 2 times x plus 2. Notice here that we've got the insides matching. And when we have a situation like this one, we can actually factor out the x plus 2 the way we factor out any other term or polynomial. If you're still confused as to why we're able to do this, just think of these two expressions as the variable, let's say, q. And we'll just remind ourselves that this is equal to x plus 2. Now, just like any other equation, we can factor out this q to get q times 3x plus 2. And since we remember that q is equal to x plus 2, we can just replace q with it to get a final answer of y equals x plus 2 times 3x plus 2. And that's it. If you want to double check if your answer is correct, all you need to do is expand to see if you get the same equation that you started with. Great, so let's try another example together. Here we've got y equals 2x squared minus x minus 15. Now, assuming that this can be factored, let's try out what we just learned. So first of all, we multiply a and c, which are 2 and negative 15. In this case, to get negative 30. Then we find all of the factors of negative 30, which are the negative and positives of 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, and 30. And since negative 30 is a negative number, it must be a negative factor multiplied with a positive factor. All right, and these two factors need to add up to be equal to our b, which is negative 1. So 1 and negative 30 multiplies to negative 30, but added together is negative 29. So these are not our numbers. Reversely, negative 1 and 30 is multiplied to become negative 30, but added together to become 29. Those are out the window. 2 and negative 15 are multiplied to become negative 30, but added together to become negative 13. Negative 2 and 15 are multiplied to become negative 30, but added to become 13. So those are out the window as well. 3 and negative 10 are multiplied to be negative 30, but added to become negative 7. Negative 3 and 10 are multiplied to become negative 30, 
but adding them together becomes seven. All right, so now we've got our five and six, and right off the bat, I can tell you that if one of these numbers are negative, the difference would be negative one. For example, negative six and five would be negative one. And obviously, multiplying the two would give us negative 30. And so this pair of numbers seems to be exactly what we were looking for. So great. Before we move on to finish this, a lesson is to be learned. You already have the pairs of numbers that would multiply to become negative 30. So what you should do is worry strictly about how they would add together to become the B that we're looking for. There's no way, regardless of which factors become negative and which factors become positive, that 1 and 30 would add together to equal negative 1. A difference of negative 1 occurs when our factors are one away from each other which would obviously be five and six. And since the B is negative one, the negative sign should be on the bigger number so that when added together, that difference would show as a negative number as well. So make sure that you use that intuition of the difference, or shall I say the subtraction of numbers to find the pairs of factors quickly. Okay, so moving back to the question that we didn't quite finish yet. We've got our factors of negative six and five. So we split negative x into five x and minus six x. And obviously five x should be on this side rather than this side, since you can see that this five would factor out well over here. And this six should be on this side since you know that a two can factor out of here. So if we do one segment at a time and factor this, we would get 2x times x minus 3 and 5 times x minus 3 for this. Now, if we factor out the x minus 3 in the same way that we did for the last example, then we would get the final answer of y equals x minus 3 times 2x plus 5. All right, and that's how we factor a more complicated polynomial with an A of something other than one. That's it for this video, and we hope to see you in the next one.